Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 66 Birthday Feast Come evening, when Li Chen returned to the estate, Qi Yunruo brought up the matter regarding Consort Ji. Li Chen furrowed his brows. Finding things difficult, Qi Yunruo said, I couldn't refuse Consort Ji with the way she looked. After all, they are mother and son. With his gaze upon him, Li Chen nodded. Mm, all right. Find a suitable place for them to meet. I know. Then Li Chen said, Today, the Emperor summoned Prince Qing and Prince Yang back to the capital. Those Northwest matters will be given to Zhao Weidu. The Emperor also arranged for a civil official to go along. Can you guess who? Qi Yunruo looked at his expression, saying suspiciously, It can't be old man Wen, right? But Li Chen smiled. Truly intelligent. How could it be him? asked Qi Yunruo, frowning. In his seat, Li Chen leaned his head back. In a careless manner, he said, perhaps he had talked too much lately and now the emperor is fed up with him. His majesty saw that he still had a use, and dispatched him to the northwest. Great scholar Wen is an erudite scholar. He's great at teaching culture, so let him teach the barbarians in the northwest this. Happiness filling his heart, Qi Yunruo said, so that he won't be unsure of what to do every day. It's either everyone knows this or everyone should know this with him. He can bring these two useless statements and teach people everywhere. Jing Er's birthday was one day before Li Chen would start his new posts. Beginning at the dawn of that day, Prince Chun's estate was bustling. This was also Qi Yunruo's first time personally arranging such an important event. He was afraid of making any mistakes, and so he patrolled everywhere. From receiving the gifts to arranging for the delivery of the dishes to the tables, he didn't stop for break even once. The maidservants dressed the five-year-old Jing Er like a doll. He wore a rabbit coat to meet guests. Who knew how much flattery he experienced today? Qi Yunruo still remembered how Consort Ji wanted to meet with Jing Er and felt a bit worried. Li Chen had arranged for Nanny Cheng to stay at Winter Plum Courtyard. This was because Qi Nikan entered the prince estate later than all his other women, so she didn't know how to guard against spying. Li Chen had not inserted any spies to monitor the two secondary consorts who used to live in Frost Autumn Courtyard together. However, Qi Yunruo suspected consort Wei. As such, he sent some people to watch her, afraid that she would do something bad. And Consort Ji? Since the beginning, she never had a filter for her words. A very straightforward personality. In the past, Consort Ji had looked down on Qi Yunruo very often. Perhaps it's because such a surly and unreasonable woman suddenly grew weak that Qi Yunruo couldn't refuse letting the mother and son pair meet. Furthermore, Qi Yunruo thought that separating a mother and son was a very cruel thing to do. However, he could not bear to return Jing Er to Consort Ji's side. At the banquet in the forecourt, Prince Jing and a few imperial clan members sat at Li Chen's table, the table of the host. The other senior officials were arranged to sit in other tables all around, making it convenient for Li Chen to stand and toast everyone. Qi Yunruo sat in a corner. Due to some reasons, the prince estate did not invite Ji Huan to the banquet. However, Qi Yunruo's identity was special. Even though he didn't know anyone at his table, his identity was the most noble. They toasted him again and again but Qi Yunruo had prepared for this. He had the maidservants behind him switch out his wine for water. He even had the prince's wine switched out as well. A large drinking party went on at the banquet. Qi Yunruo noticed that the prince had already brought Jing Er to another table to toast with a smile. The guests at that table all rose to their feet to return a greeting. Leading along his son, the prince conversed a little with those people, then he made his way toward Qi Yunruo's direction. Qi Yunruo relaxed. Rose to his feet and toasted him. Standing by his side, Li Chen returned his toast and smiled. This humble prince thanks all of you for coming. Please drink your cup to its full. The guests sitting at the table did as told. Qi Yunruo dropped to a crouch and said to Jing Er, 
I'll take you to see the womenfolk in the inner courtyard. Not quite understanding, Jing Er asked curiously, where are we going? Qi Yunruo hinted toward Li Chen, and the latter nodded. Qi Yunruo said to Jing Er, we'll talk as we walk. Jing Er nodded. All right. Following that, he extended his hand for him to hold. After glancing at Li Chen, Qi Yunruo led Jing Er away. On the way, Qi Yunruo had his thoughts wander. Jing Er, on the other hand, was bursting with excitement. He said to Qi Yunruo, Am I going to have a lot of gifts today? Are all these gifts for me? Mm, once we return, I will sort all the things you can use and arrange for a little storeroom for you to place them, replied Qi Yunruo in an absent minded manner. I'll give some to younger sister too. Qi Yunruo forced a smile and said, Jing Er truly is a good older brother. From far away, Qi Yunruo could hear the sounds of the banquet from Winter Plum Courtyard, with songstresses singing. Standing at the door, he said to a maidservant, Once eldest young master meets the mistresses, send him back outside. Yes, this slave will comply. Then, Qi Yunruo walked a few tens of steps away, waiting at the reception pavilion. The maidservant brought Jing Er inside. Within the courtyard, Qi Nikan sat in the seat of honor. Although he was somewhat timid, he nevertheless went forward and saluted in a well-behaved manner. Jing Er greets mother. A grunt of acknowledgement left Qi Nikan's lips. She nodded indifferently, then pointed to the people at the side. This is your maternal grandmother. Jing Er pays respects to maternal grandmother, and he saluted Countess Ziang. When Jing Er was before Princess Consort Yang, she smiled. Eldest young master has already grown up this much. Truly adorable. Did you see the gifts Fourth Ant sent you? Jing Er thanks Fourth Ant for the wooden bird of prey. Jing Er really likes it. Uncle Little Chi said he will place it in my room later. In a flash, the mood changed. With strange expressions, the women around all shared a look. There were also murmurs. Jing Er sensed a change in the room, looking all around in unease but he didn't know what he had said wrong. Consort Ji frowned deeply. She gazed at her own son from far away, hating that she could not just hold him in her arms. However, her status obstructed her. Jing Er had to meet all the first and second rank honored ladies before it was her turn. Mistress Ji was also at the table. As she looked at Jing Er, her gaze held an intensity that was hard to put into words. As if a miser were looking at treasure, itching to grab it. Jing Er met with each of the women folk. Once he arrived before Consort Ji, a maidservant informed him that this was his birth mother. Jing Er's emotions proved complicated. He was only five years old, and the most complicated situation he had ever been in was this one. When he had left Consort Ji, he had already been old enough. There was no way he could forget his own birth mother. But in the half year he had been separated from her, he already found this woman very unfamiliar. Jing Er saluted. Greetings to Consort Mother. In a flash, Consort Ji's tense heart relaxed. Fully content, she reached out, wanting to touch his face. However, Jing Er shrank back out of reflex, taking a step behind him. Consort Ji's hand froze in place, still outstretched. Not too far away from her, Consort Wei smiled. Meanwhile, Countess Ziang said to Qi Nikan full of worry, Have you thought about what I said to you before? Did you come to a decision? Frowning, Qi Nikan replied, What matter exactly is mother referring to? Countess Ziang said in a soft voice, About having you raise eldest young master. Why should I raise other people's children? Countess Ziang resented the fact that her daughter failed to meet her expectations. My silly daughter, right now, eldest young master is already this old, but you still don't have a legitimate son. Wouldn't you have more confidence if you adopted him? What kind of confidence do I have? The whole capital knows I can't give birth to a son. Who doesn't know I didn't give birth to eldest young master? Once you adopt him, he will be your son and you will be his priority. Gaze gloomy and cold, 
Chi Nikan looked in Consort Ji's direction. If I mention this matter, let's not talk about whether Consort Ji would agree. Would His Highness permit it? Even if other people don't comment on it, I don't want to call the cheap spawn of a concubine as my son and let him borrow my status to rapidly bring up his own. Even if they want it, and beg me to raise their sons, I won't do it. With an ashen face, Countess Xiang truly found her daughter to have become possessed. If she didn't want such a good child, then did she really want people to step on her in the future? At present, the emperor was fond of Prince Chun again. Countess Xiang's intuition told her that this was an opportunity. As long as Prince Chun's estate rose abruptly to a towering position, and her daughter became the empress, she herself would have more confidence in Count Xiang's estate. Count Xiang was engrossed in drinking and playing with women. Once, Qi Dangzia came to the estate crying that her husband wanted to take on a concubine from a good family. Yet Count Xiang didn't even help her. No one in the Count estate could convince him to do anything and Countess Xiang grew more and more depressed. However, since Qi Dangzia and her birth mother ate losses, Countess Xiang was also overjoyed. From the start, Concubine Lu was a concubine from a good family. When she had first entered the estate, Countess Xiang had endured it with much difficulty. Now, Qi Dangzia's husband also wanted to take on a concubine from a good family. So, what right did that mother and daughter pair have to complain? Kuner, you truly haven't thought about it. I won't raise other people's children. Mother should give up trying to convince me. Countess Xiang could only stay silent, before saying, How are the two princesses? Impatience showed on her face. The older female servants are taking care of the princesses. Mother need not worry. And Countess Xiang didn't say anything again. On the side, Jing Er approached Consort Wei and saluted her. Jing Er greets secondary Consort Wei. A smile graced Consort Wei's lips. If Jing Er has the time, come visit your second brother more. He's in his active age and very lively. With a bright elder brother like you accompanying him. I feel more at ease. To which Jing Er smiled. I will come see younger brother. Once Jing Er had met and greeted everyone, he made his way toward the princess consort. Jing Er asks to be excused, mother. Father is waiting for Jing Er at the forecourt. Chi Nikan nodded, not paying him any attention. She did not notice consort Ji following him out in secret either. Because Chi Yunruo did not want Consort Ji to bring Jing Er to Frost Autumn Courtyard, he had a little greenhouse tidied up for the two to meet. He had waited at the door until now for Jing Er. Jing Er ran into his embrace, and Chi Yunruo smiled. You've gotten a lot heavier. I almost can't lift you up anymore. In his arms, Jing Er twisted around. Chi Yunruo said gently, Were you wronged just now? No said Jing Er, voice muffled. I just found it very strange and didn't feel comfortable, it hadn't just been Consort Ji and her mother's gazes that were strange. Too many people had looked at him in a very odd manner. Before he could finish speaking, Chi Yunruo caught sight of Consort Ji rushing over with the support of her maidservant, Pei Er. Chi Yunruo sighed. Jing Er, your birth mother wants to speak privately with you today. I'll be waiting here and you'll go in. Is that all right? A trace of alarm flashed through Jing Er's eyes but Chi Yunruo smiled as he said, I'll just be outside. Nothing will happen. Jing Er nodded. Consort Ji, who rushed over, did not even greet Chi Yunruo, merely grabbing Jing Er by the hand and entering the room. Consort Ji wasn't very up to date with the matters happening outside the estate. However, after the people around her kept talking about it, she finally learned of everything. It turned out that His Highness' influence had been growing greater and greater, keeping the other imperial princes under control. If there was a legitimate son, he would be the heir. If there was no legitimate son, the eldest son would be the heir. If the princess consort never gave birth to a legitimate son, then didn't that mean her own son could become the heir of the prince? She was so excited that she trembled, her heart pounding. 
The same thought coursed through her mind over and over, it doesn't look like the princess consort and his highness will keep trying for a legitimate son. Second young master is still young, yet my own son has already started his studies. He's been living with his highness all this time, and they definitely share a deep bond. However, there was a large problem before her. If Jing Er did not return to her side, then he would start to forget her, his birth mother, more and more. Then what's to be done? Consort Ji resented Li Chen for taking away her son. She always found letting her son and a male pet live together to be an extremely poor decision. Staying close to red makes one red. Staying close to black makes one black. If her son didn't grow up properly, it would be all Chi Yunruo's fault. After Consort Ji had heard those words of Consort Wei, she went to beg Chi Yunruo to see her son. Again and again. Although it was difficult to bear, she had no choice but to admit that this tactic actually worked, Chi Yunruo had truly spoken to the prince and the prince permitted it. As long as she could persuade Jing Er to recognize her as his mother and trust her, his birth mother, even more. As Consort Ji pulled Jing Er into the greenhouse, he felt somewhat nervous as he looked at her. Consort Ji said, Jing Er, Jing Er, mother's good child. Did you pass your days well this half year? Jing Er nodded. Yes. But Consort Ji felt like he was lying. Heart hurting, she said. If you stay at mother's side, you wouldn't have to read that male pet's expression out of fear. Mother would definitely give the best things to you so that you'll live in peace and without worry. And you won't have any misgivings. Yet, Jing Er replied awkwardly, I'm not reading anyone's expression. Consort mother, father and uncle Little Chi treat me very well. Expression one of anxiety, Consort Ji said, Why can you think like this? I am your mother. It's best if you stay by my side. At that time, your father was led astray by Chi Yunruo and so took you away from me. You have to remember this, others will treat you well in order to use you, but I'm the only one who treats you well sincerely. Not a word left Jing Er's lips. Consort Ji said, that man outside is the most hypocritical. Don't come into contact with him. He will corrupt you. If he does anything strange, you must tell me and your father immediately. You have to understand that his identity is lowly. In the first place, he does not have the qualifications to approach you. Consort mother, don't say any more. I can tell clearly who treats me well and who doesn't. Jing Er was unhappy that someone would speak poorly of his uncle Little Chi. How can you clearly tell, said Consort Ji, breathing hard. Her face flushed. She dropped to a kneel, grabbing Jing Er's arms. Even your father is unable to see clearly about this, so how can you? You just need to understand that I am your mother, and I only have you as my son. I am the person who treats you the best. Consort mother, you're hurting me, Jing Er cried out. As if she did not hear him, Consort Ji drew closer to him. Good Jing Er, good son. If you're given the position of heir, then in the future, you will be. Chi Yunruo kicked the door down. He looked at her with a scowl on his face. Then Jing Er broke free from Consort Ji and ran toward him. Chi Yunruo. You eavesdropped on us, she shrieked. She was the picture of alarm. If the prince learned of her words. Chi Yunruo crouched down and examined Jing Er's arms. He flatly said, I did not eavesdrop. I came because I heard Jing Er's cry of pain. Consort Ji, what did you do just now? Realization struck Consort Ji but she looked as angry as before. I am a secondary consort that the Emperor bestowed to His Highness, a lesser second rank honored lady. What are you? You dare to kick open the door and interrupt our conversation. Frightened, Jing Er hid behind Chi Yunruo. Chi Yunruo only said, since you are Jing Er's mother, then you should not hurt him. Consort Ji said in an arrogant manner, I'm the person who thinks of Jing Er the most. Furrowing his brows, Chi Yunruo lifted Jing Er into his arms, preparing to return to the forecourt. Jing Er pressed his lowered head onto his shoulder. 
such a scenario caused Chi Yunruo much heartache and regret. However, Consort Ji kept going, saying, Jing Er is my son, part of my flesh and blood. You don't have the qualifications to criticize me. She watched as Chi Yunruo carried her child away and Jing Er never once glanced back at her. Consort Ji's heart was frozen. She frowned. No. I have to rely on him in the future. I'll definitely be able to step on those people. At that time, I'll definitely give Chi Yunruo something good to see. Jing Er was in a poor mood. From start to finish, Chi Yunruo did not ask about what Consort Ji had said to him. He only felt regret agreeing to let Consort Ji meet with Jing Er. He had someone send the prince a message, before carrying Jing Er into his room. Jing Er lay down on the bed. To which Chi Yunruo said in a gentle voice, Little birthday boy, don't be unhappy. How about I take you to see the other gifts in secret? Jing Er glanced at him. His little brain truly couldn't understand too many things. However, he trusted his intuition very much. A moment later, he smiled and nodded. Mm, you promised me that those are all mine. Of course those are yours. Chi Yunruo stroked his head. Come night, Chi Yunruo mentioned wanting to move Mu to the forecourt as well. Li Chen asked, Did something happen today? Chi Yunruo explained what had occurred at Consort Ji's in simple terms. Then he said in a gloomy tone, Right now, Jing Er has yet to get back to normal. Your Highness, Jing Er dropping his younger brother and Yan Er eating dirty things were all planned by Consort Wei. At present, Second young master is still young. If he learns these bad ways in the future, it'll be too late to correct him. Chi Yunruo had not eavesdropped on purpose, and only saw Consort Ji and Jing Er's reactions. He also knew she would definitely say something to Jing Er. The Wei family's reputation had always been great. Consort Wei's father was industrious and conscientious. The students of the Imperial Academy all respected him to an immense degree. And this was the biggest reason why Li Chen would not act against Consort Wei. Chi Yunruo frowned. If Consort Wei is unwilling to do this, what's to be done? Dully, Li Chen said, perhaps she would be overjoyed. Your Highness, if you don't ever get a legitimate son, would His Majesty? Would he use this reason to not appoint you as the Crown Prince? Chi Yunruo looked at Li Chen in worry but Li Chen only smiled. This isn't a big deal. Consort Wei had urged Consort Ji to want her child back so that the prince would dislike Consort Ji and her son. After all, Consort Wei's son wasn't from the legitimate line or the eldest. In order for her son to be considered for the heir, Jing Er must lose the prince's favor. She didn't have to say much. She only needed to inform Consort Ji of the circumstances in the capital right now, and the latter would understand that she must cultivate feelings between herself and her son. Once Jing Er returned to her hands, Consort Wei and Mu Er's opportunity would arrive. However, never had she expected that the prince would want to move Mu Er to the forecourt this early. She was caught off guard. She had envied the fact that Consort Ji's child could be by the prince's side so early. Could foster intimacy with the prince. However, Right now Muir was still this young and was still ignorant of the world. After leaving his mother, he would be sad for a while but shortly after, he would forget her. Forget that she was his birth mother. Muir would become just like Jing Er, becoming even closer to the prince and Chi Yunruo. No, when Jing Er left Frost Autumn Courtyard, he pretty much understood some things by then but right now, Muir didn't know anything. Consort Wei thought she could control people's hearts. But at this moment, she was out of ideas. She could not find a way to reject the offer or accept it willingly. When the prince had people bring Muir away, Muir had reached out with his little hand toward her, crying loudly. Consort Wei sat there in a daze, watching as her child was taken away. Chi Yunruo. Chi Yunruo, Consort Wei sneered. You want to snatch away my child too. She naturally knew that Chi Yunruo had guarded against her from the start. However, Consort Wei had never exposed any opening for people to take advantage of. 
everything had been in the palm of her hand. But Consort Wei had neglected this fact, even if Qi Yunruo did not have any evidence, he could still find some using the prince's people. And once the prince gave an order, there was no way she could reject it. She failed to understand that Consort Ji's change in conduct raised an alarm within Qi Yunruo. Qi Yunruo didn't want these pure and innocent children to be corrupted by their own mother's schemes. For this reason, he had decided to bring Muir to Ink Lotus Courtyard. The so-called reaping what one had sown. But Consort Wei could not wrap her head around it. Qi Yunruo, you and I cannot exist together. End chapter Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 67 On the Verge 1. After Muir moved to Jing'er Swing, Jing'er didn't feel sad anymore. Excited, he personally ordered people to furnish and decorate his younger brother's room. Yanner also came over to help, and Muir no longer cried. Following behind his elder brother, he took in his bedroom with curiosity. Qi Yunruo relaxed. Muir indeed was at the age where everything piqued his curiosity. After the pain from being separated from his mother gradually disappeared, he bounced about excitedly throughout his new residence. Come night, Jing'er led him by the hand to pay respects to their father. Jing'er taught his younger brother to kneel properly. Then he kowtowed and said, paying respects to father. Muir moved about, unwilling to kneel. Unhappy about it, Jing'er said, you have to listen to me. I am the older brother. But Muir had already run to Qi Yunruo's side. Indignant, Jing'er said to Qi Yunruo, before he even learns how to walk properly, he already only knows how to run. With a smile on his lips, Qi Yunruo said, Since you are the older brother, you have to be patient with your younger brother. A snort. If he doesn't listen to me, then I'll hit him. At the sound of those words, Muir said angrily, I'll hit you. Uncle Little Chi, just look at him, blurted Jing'er. Chi Yunruo couldn't help but laugh. There was a smile Li Chen's lips, too. At present, it wasn't busy at the court of state ceremonial. However, he ran about all day at the office of transmission and thus, he was the picture of exhaustion. Yanner broke into a smile. Big brother mustn't hit younger brother. If you break him, then what? Pouting, Jing'er said, if he listens to me, then I won't hit him. In the blink of an eye, two months passed. Prince Ching and Prince Yang rushed back to the capital before the new year. After receiving a firm reprimand from the emperor in the palace, they hung their heads as they returned to their consort mother's side. Within the palace of Bright Sun, the empress coldly said, Back then, you didn't listen to this palace and competed for achievements with Prince Ching in the court. Now look what happened. Prince Yang said, Imperial Mother, you don't know the circumstances back then. Don't tell me I had to watch as Prince Ching distinguished himself. The Northwest is a hard bone. If it was that easy to gnaw it, do you think Prince Chun would let you people grab it that easily from his hand? Lowering his head, Prince Yang said in a hateful manner, Second Imperial Brother is too cunning. It's you who are stupid. You've achieved nothing this half year. You might as well have remained at the capital and have your princess consort give birth to a legitimate son. Right now, among all the mature princes, only you have yet to have a son. Doesn't Second Imperial Brother also not have a legitimate son? asked Prince Yang. The Empress felt a headache coming on. But his eldest son is already five years old. After hesitating for a long time, he approached the Empress. Actually, son didn't end up empty-handed during my time in the Northwest. Within her palace, noble consort Yuan said with a headache, it's better if you calm down and strengthen your power in the capital. Unconvinced, Prince Qing said, it's all second imperial brother's fault. He didn't have the ability to suppress these two tribes so told us to go. Now he's pleased with himself. Humph. Don't tell me you forgot that the emperor ordered people to handle those two tribes the way Prince Chun wants. He's not without ability. Consort mother, what do you think I should do? 
Would Imperial Father think I'm incapable because of this? Light laughter escaped noble consort Yuan's lips. During this half year, this palace has seen through this matter. Hum? How? In a dull manner, noble consort Yuan said, for example, no matter how Prince Jing jumps about, the emperor would never make him the crown prince. Sita's hidden master should be him as well. The emperor already knows this but he has his own reasons not to deal with Prince Jing as of yet. However, if Prince Jing thinks his majesty forgave him and continues doing things he shouldn't, then he's truly stupid. Prince Jing said, but consort mother, second imperial brother is the one basking in the limelight at the court right now. And the person most qualified for being the crown prince is him. Back then, after the Empress Dowager took away Prince Chun, he no longer had the support of the Zhou clan. I can see it clearly. The Empress has endured the Empress Dowager for a long time, said noble consort Yuan. She wants the son she raised to surpass the son the Empress Dowager raised. At this moment, no one can stay out of it anymore. One is you, one is Prince Chun, and one is Prince Jing. Now, we just have to wait and see what the Emperor does. Once the new year passed, the Emperor summoned the officials who had urgently wanted him to choose a crown prince since a long time ago. The capital was impassioned. It seemed as if the Emperor truly had the intention to select a crown prince. Li Chen, the one caught at the center of the storm, continued to attend court and attend to his duties on time. He wasn't like Prince Qing and Prince Jing, rushing to make friends with the senior officials making the inner courtyard of Prince Chun's estate gloomy. During the deep of winter, Qi Nikan fell gravely ill. When an imperial physician came to diagnose and treat her, he told Li Chen that she did not recuperate long enough between her two births, harming her body. Afterward, she grew tense and strained, overthinking every day. Then, for a long period, she drank nourishing medicine that would help a woman give birth to a son but such medicines were not approved by the Imperial Academy of Medicine. The princess consort secretly met with doctors from the civilian realm. Those doctors each had their own folk remedies. The princess consort would take one type of medicine for a period, then switch to a different one if she felt it wasn't working. The effects of those medicines were unclear. Accumulating together, they caused Chi Nikan's health to deteriorate even more. Which caused this grave illness to blow up during the deep of winter. The concubines took care of the princess consort every day. Originally, the children should stay by her bedside. However, after Chi Nikan fell ill, she could not bear to lay eyes on young boys more and more, to the point where her illness would grow worse after seeing Jing Er and Mu Er. Even seeing Yan Er would give that result and her own daughters were too young. Afraid that they would also grow sick from being too close, everyone didn't allow them to approach their mother's bed. The concubines grew used to crying and praying to Buddha that Chi Nikan would recover. Since Prince Chun's estate was in the spotlight, the imperial physician dared not slight them. He came to examine Chi Nikan's pulse every day. Yet, her condition only grew worse by the day. The eyes of the harem focused on Li Chen. They thought, if Chi Nikan truly died, then who would be the next princess consort? Scholarly officials would not promote a concubine to the main consort. However, if the prince became the emperor, he could promote a concubine into the empress, and no one would have anything to say. Thus, if Chi Nikan died, the current emperor would not bestow a new princess consort for Li Chen. Growing older had made the emperor fearful. So now, he considered each of his sons as an enemy. He no longer remembered the events of his past, only remembering that he was the emperor, that he was the ruler of the whole country. Even after he chose a crown prince, he was still the emperor. He felt his position threatened but once he realized his body would not allow him to continue working hard, he had no choice but to choose an heir. Even so, he still felt very afraid of his own sons. Currently, he allowed the senior officials to elect a crown prince. However, if they mentioned Prince Chun, the emperor would say that Prince Chun did not have a legitimate son and did not have a peaceful residence. 
people of noble character must cultivate themselves to regulate the family and rule the state. Prince Chun could not even compare to the Qi family. Regarding Prince Jing and Prince Qing, the emperor said that they weren't even from the legitimate line. Regarding Prince Yang, the emperor said he was young and had no achievements, too insufficient to be the crown prince. This was the last struggle for the throne. He didn't want to watch on helplessly as his young and strong son snatched away the power in his hands. Even if he had already made a decision on who the crown prince would be. As the situation in the court grew ever more strained, no one dared to speak carelessly when morning court assembled. From afar, Li Chen looked at the emperor whose vision was already blurred from old age and he understood that this person had chosen himself. However, he still needed to prepare for the long and drawn-out conflict. This battle was between him and his imperial father, not with his brothers. Twenty years ago, General Qi, Qi Ran, had his last victory and it was exactly during the emperor's 30th birthday. The emperor changed the era name to Yuan Qing. On the 22nd year of the Yuan Qing era, a case accusing Prince Chun of plotting with foreign enemies sprang up in the capital. On that day, Li Chen had entered the palace to attend morning court. Qi Yunruo stayed in the estate waiting for an old retired imperial physician to examine Qi Nikan's illness. This old imperial physician was highly skilled in gynecology but he was old and had left the practice a few years ago for a life of retirement. Qi Yunruo had expended much effort to invite this person here. Many people were under the impression that he itched for Qi Nikan's death. However, Qi Yunruo had never once thought of such things. He didn't want to hurt anyone. Nor did he want to look on helplessly as a twenty-something-year-old woman died. Even if he hated Qi Nikan even more, he would still try his best to save her. That was his bottom line, don't harm others and be kind-hearted. Qi Yunruo kept watch at Winter Plum Courtyard. Suddenly, a sense of unease entered his heart. He rose to his feet and looked toward the outside. It's already this late. Why hasn't the old imperial physician arrived yet? Su Ji said, this slave will have someone to go urge him here faster. M.M. Sir. Sir. A guard rushed in. Sir. Some people brought an imperial decree to the prince estate and are surrounding us. How could this happen? Trembling, the guard replied, it's a general from the western mountain camp. He has an imperial edict from the emperor and says he needs to enter the estate and search for evidence regarding Prince Chun's communication with Zenyuan country. Absurd. Why would His Highness be in communication with Zenyuan country? Standing abruptly, Qi Yunruo left the room in large strides. It was unknown which side was framing Li Chen, this move was too inferior. But why would the emperor actually send an imperial decree for this was anyone's guess. He left Winter Plum Courtyard quickly and made his way to the estate's main doors. The estate's main doors, side doors, and corner doors were all surrounded. No one could enter or leave through them. Once Qi Yunruo was at the main doors, he yelled, open them. Within the imperial palace, Li Chen sat calmly in his seat holding a cup of tea. The concubine of Cheng Lingjun has already confessed. The masters behind her are Cheng Sija and Prince Chun. These past few years, Prince Chun has controlled the Ministry of Revenue and embezzled innumerable funds. Large amounts of wealth had been brought into Zenyuan country. The king of Zenyuan country agreed to hand over their influence and spies in our capital. Not only that, but many of the influential families that had connections with the prior dynasty and were supporting Cheng Sija in secret are now supporting Prince Chun. In the northwest, Prince Chun used his male pet to make contact with Cheng Sija. Cheng Sija and Prince Chun have continual letter correspondence. Li Chen merely sat and did not seem to have the intention to kneel and beg for forgiveness. He did not even refute a single word for himself. Each of the imperial princes had on a different expression. Prince Yang had his head lowered, the most nervous among them. He did not wish for the thorough collapse of his second imperial brother. He only wanted his imperial father to completely hate his second imperial brother because then he would have the highest chance to become the crown prince. Prince Chun, what do you have to say, 
asked the emperor. The main doors of Prince Chun's estate slowly opened before Qi Yunruo. With a serene expression, he gazed at the soldiers outside. The general leading the group grasped the reins of his horse, looking down at him loftily. Qi Yunruo said with indifference, so it turned out to be Deputy General Su. It's been a while. Never had Su Yuan expected it to be him. At once, new hatred and old grudges rushed forth in his heart. He laughed grimly. No wonder I couldn't find a young noble Li anywhere in the capital. So, you were actually that young noble from the Li family. Good. Adjutant Qi, Sir Qi, please step aside from the main doors of Prince Chun's estate. This general has an imperial decree at hand. His Majesty has ordered this general to bring my subordinates to search the estate. Li Chen said, Sun official has nothing to say. Oh. One can always trump up a charge against another. In all likelihood, no matter what Sun official says now, there would be people who think Sun official is resorting to sophistry. So, what could Sun official even say? Prince Ching sneered. Since you have nothing to say, then is second imperial brother admitting guilt? Li Chen smiled. Why should I admit to being guilty? Does second imperial brother truly think we don't have any information that can be used against you, said Pans Ching. An advisor of your estate, Li Zihoki, said that you always complain about imperial father not conferring you the position of crown prince. That you were resentful time after time. You even said that no matter what schemes were needed, you must become the crown prince. As Li Zihoki slowly walked to where Qi Yunruo was, Qi Yunruo firmly wrinkled his brows. Indeed, he had never imagined that the person who kept transmitting news to outside the estate was this person. He had suspected many people in the past. But after investigating them, he could not find any proof. Later on, Qi Yunruo suspected Chao Manjin. He found him greedy for money. If someone tried to bribe him, he would definitely betray the prince. On the other hand, Li Zihoki had even dared to impeach his superior after painstakingly becoming an official, and was dismissed from office as a result. If Prince Chun did not ascend the throne, he would not have another chance at becoming an official for the rest of his life. Li Zihoki lowered his head. Sir Qi, there's already conclusive evidence. So why must your honored self still block their path? Smiling, Qi Yunruo said, What evidence? Why aren't I aware of it? Then, Li Zihoki raised his head. As if to conceal the unease in his heart, he shouted, In His Highness' study, there are secret letters between His Highness and Cheng Sija, the king of Xinyuan country. The last time the head of the estate guards, Chu Qing, went to the northwest, he had much contact with those people. Li Chen looked at Prince Qing, a faint smile on his lips. It seems third brother and one of my advisors are quite friendly. In a loud voice, Prince Ching said, Li Zihoki does not covet status, sincerely loyal to imperial father. Therefore, when he discovered you had the desire to plot a rebellion, he contacted me. We originally had no connections, it's because of you that we did. Li Chen nodded. Then, third brother, when did you find out about this matter? And how did you form connections with Li Zihoki? It hadn't been Prince Ching who initiated this matter. Rather, it had been Prince Yang. However, Prince Ching had sensed that this was an opportunity to drag Li Chen down. As such, he exposed the fact that he and Li Zihoki were in contact. Such contact had first started when Li Chen had returned to the capital in triumph. While Li Chen was in the northwest region, Li Zihoki had discreetly looked for and sent news in the capital to Li Chen. Thus, he felt he had accomplished a great contribution. But what ultimately happened was this, Li Chen appointed his favored Qi Yunruo as the estate's adjutant. At that time, the Yuan clan that had kept trying to infiltrate Prince Chun's estate finally found an opportunity, becoming allies with Li Zihoki at once. Li Zihoki had gone through ten years of strenuous studies painstakingly. He was a scholar from a poor and humble family yet had an air of arrogance. 
After he had lost his official position however, he realized that this air of arrogance was worthless before those who have influence. He had poured his heart and soul into working for Prince Chun, but Prince Chun would rather give his male pet an official position than himself. He, Li Zihoki, was unwilling to work under a male pet. As a result, he sided with the Yuan clan. Later on, much of the filthy things between the prince and princess consort had been leaked to the outside by him. Chi Yunruo looked at Li Zihoki. A good while later, he said, Mr. Li, His Highness has treated you well. His Highness has treated me well, said Li Zihoki, face red from agitation. If that's the case, why didn't he give me a chance? I have studied the texts of the sages for more than twenty years, yet His Highness wants me to work under you. Why? You were born a man, yet you do such shameful things. You. Enough, said Su Yuan, a cold laugh escaping his lips. Adjutant Chi, don't tell me you want to resist an imperial decree. Chi Yunruo said, if you want to enter the estate, it's possible. However, the inner courtyard is full of womenfolk of noble identities. They're not someone you random soldiers can offend at will. Right now, I must invite the womenfolk to the main courtyard. The main courtyard is off limits for you people. Stop dreaming, said Su Yuan. The imperial decree did not say we cannot search the main courtyard of the prince estate. Then did that imperial decree say you can insult the womenfolk of the estate? Deputy General Su, the estate has one principal consort and two secondary consorts, both who have ranks higher than yours. There are also two princesses whose ranks the emperor personally conferred. If any of them are frightened, how many lives do you have to compensate for that? For a moment, Su Yuan was speechless. Chi Yunruo said, There is an old doctor blocked by your soldiers outside the estate. That old doctor is someone I summoned to examine the princess consort. Hurry and tell your men to get out of the way. Escort the doctor inside. Su Yuan said coldly, Presumptuous. This general is here to search the prince estate. Not to act as a servant for you. At this time, other people cannot enter. Prince Jing seemed to have recalled something and said, At first, the envoys who left for Zenyuan country proposed that Zenyuan country must recall all their spies in our capital. Following that, there indeed were a few who returned to Zenyuan country. But among the officials who acted as envoys, there seemed to be an assistant envoy who had a great relationship with second brother. Therefore, at that time, the king of Zenyuan country and the envoy Ji Huan negotiated which spies could be left in the capital for second brother's use, right? Li Chen glanced at him. In Marshal Hero Hall right now, there were only important ministers and imperial princes present. No irrelevant people around. Although it was a secret that Ji Huan had stayed in Prince Chun's estate before, there were still tracks left behind of that affair. Kneeling on the ground, Ji Hansong rushed to say, My lowly son has in fact stayed at Prince Chun's estate in the past but Prince Chun had already left the capital when he passed the imperial exams. Li Chen smiled. Eldest imperial brother is truly too concerned about younger brother. You even know who I have associated with. Actually, I also know a little about who eldest imperial brother share friendships with. For example, the former county magistrate of Hiluo County, Sir He. And also, Prince Jing's pupils dilated but Li Chen didn't continue with his statement. He raised his head and looked at the emperor. The emperor sat on a couch in Martial Hero Hall, as if he were watching a farce. However, he wanted this farce to become more and more intense, he did not want this farce to end. He didn't care about Li Chen questioning Prince Jing, and rather said, what else did the concubine of the Cheng family say? Sir, said an eunuch after rushing to Qi Yunruo's side. Anxious, he continued, Her Highness the Princess Consort can't drink any medicine. It looks like, looks like. Qi Yunruo coldly looked at Su Yuan. Deputy General Su, did you hear? If you don't find the old imperial physician, you'll be held responsible for anything that happens to Princess Consort. 
Su Yuan hesitated for a bit. Bringing an old doctor over shouldn't affect his duties. However, if he agreed to it now, it would seem like he was admitting defeat. Chi Yun Ruo said, I want to ask you, what does His Majesty's Imperial Decree say? Did it already convict Prince Chun? If not, Princess Consort is still a proper first-ranked Princess Consort. She is still the daughter-in-law of the Emperor and Empress. You need to think carefully of the consequences. Su Yuan said in a ruthless manner, bring that old doctor here. What's his name? Chi Yun Ruo let escape a breath of relief. He is already 70 years old and is sitting in the carriage of the prince estate. The estate's guards also drove the carriage. His surname is Wu. Su Yuan beckoned for his men to let the carriage pass. Afterward, he laughed coldly. Do you still have any excuses to obstruct us? You've already wasted a lot of our time. This general still needs to enter the palace and report to the emperor. If you still won't step aside, don't blame this general for not giving you face. Reporting to your majesty, that concubine's lips are sealed shut. She's unwilling to rat out the other spies, and only said she was working for Prince Chun. She also did not disclose how Prince Chun and the Cheng family embezzled funds from the Ministry of Revenue and sent the funds out. Cheng Wenjia and Prince Chun have always been close. After His Highness Prince Jing started managing the Ministry of Revenue, Cheng Wenjia didn't get along with him. The one who said this was director of the Imperial Clan, Marquis Bai Kang. He was also Prince Ching's father-in-law. At present, these people were all working together to drag Prince Chun down, to thoroughly destroy all his chances of being the crown prince. After that, the three factions would fight among themselves. Li Chen smiled. As such, just relying on the words of a woman and a traitor of Prince Chun's estate, my brothers and these masters rush to call me guilty. Whether or not second imperial brother is guilty, we will know once Deputy General Sua finishes searching through Prince Chun's estate, said Prince Yang. End chapter